Hello, everyone, and welcome to Locked On Flames. The summer of Brad has rolled on into fall as he has Mackenzie Weger's extension done before the regular season with eight years, $50 million deal. Let's talk about it today on Locked On Flames. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Locked On Flames. As always, I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for making Locked On Flames part of your day. And make sure that you are subscribed to Locked On Flames wherever you get your podcasts, wherever you watch your YouTube videos, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, so you know that you're never missing an episode of Locked On Flames. My goodness, what a great way to kick off the weekend to wrap up the preseason with the announcement of the Mackenzie Weger extension. Eight years, 6.5 average annual value, and it ends up being a $50 million deal. You know, you cannot hate this. You, you have to relish in the fact that this deal is done before the season starts. He is making $6.5 million as one of the strongest puck-moving defensemen in the league. And he's only 28. And this is his prime. This is his prime. I feel like $6.5 million is going to be a steal, especially when you see what defensemen are making now before the cap goes up. You know, we see... You know, Charlie McAvoy making, what, I think like $9 million. You have um, plenty of other defensemen like Brett Burns making $11 million. Eric Carlson making all that money. And I just, I truly feel like getting Uyghur for what, for less than eight is fantastic. (laughs) I will say that. And y'all know that I love a good grinder. You know I love someone who puts in the effort and is an underdog and just takes that might take a little bit of extra time to get where they are and to appreciate that success. And I think that Mackenzie Weger is one of those players that we really need to talk about and just appreciate that underdog story, especially because I feel like this team will always have that underdog quote unquote, smaller market mentality and it just has something with it. And he, when talk, when you know, talking to the media, he says uh, it means everything. And uh, when I signed the deal, I just kept thinking about how long of a road it's been for me since Junior B to the coast, which is the ECHL, and now to here. I really have no words. It's going to take. It's going to sink in a little later. I think it'll be emotion. <laughs> it'll be emotional later to call my mom and dad. This is just crazy, and I couldn't be more thankful. I don't know. I just, you know, obviously it's great when you're, like, a naturally born, talented, gifted player that gets drafted, and, you know, you barely do any time in the AHL, and you jump right into the NHL. But, you know, when you have a guy who knows what it takes to hustle and grind and that's been through the trenches to get to this level of success. I think that, you know, you genuinely know that they appreciate it and they know how to ride out those hard days. They know that it just, it takes that extra effort and they, I I just, I really appreciate Mackenzie Weaker and I appreciate everything, uh, you know, that his journey has brought to him. It gives him character. It gives him, you know, a, I would say a position to lead almost because, you know, the, you have all that experience. People are going to listen to you, you know. And when he was asked about Huberdeau, uh, 
after him and Huberto came up in conversation, <laughs> this is funny. He kept giving me an elbow or two in the gut saying, when, when are you going to do, do it? I just kept saying the same thing to him as I was saying to you guys, hopefully soon. Now maybe I can get a house next to him or something like that. Maybe one of these years they could. <laughs> and then the uh, Wes Gilbertson goes on to say, maybe one of these years they could host a co-Stanley Cup party. And I just, I am so happy. We're going to talk about this later in the show too, about the mentality around this team, the bond that this team shares and how important, you know, being teammates on the ice, it's important, but then how important it is to, you know, treat each other like friends and family off the ice as well. And, I think this team does a fantastic job with that. And Wegar goes on to say, I believe in this team. They want to win. We have a winning team, a winning coach, a winning culture. They want to win now, and I want to win now. The fact that this team believes in themselves, they have the great one of the greatest coaches, if not the greatest coach of all time, manning that locker room. It is is going to be one heck of a season. And I am so excited to see what happens. You know, right now the Flames are losing 3-1 to one to Winnipeg, but it is, uh, <laughs> it's just the regular, uh, sorry, the last game of the preseason. So does it even matter? No, it doesn't. It's nothing to stress about. But there's just something that feels so good to have this kind of confidence going into the regular season after the tumultuous off season that this team had. And we're going to talk about that next here on Locked on Flames. But, but before we do that, I do want to take a quick second to talk about our friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for football betting info this season. Find all of the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all of your sport wagering information with live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. And you know, of course, the NHL as well. Head on over to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you, as always, for tuning in to Locked on Flames. And if you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. Thank you for stumbling upon this show. And, of course, uh, if you'd like to, you can follow me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. One of the best things about this team is that they still believe in themselves. They still believe in themselves and... There is a very positive energy just coursing through that room after, even after losing 95% of your core over the last two years. There is no captain. There is no Johnny Hockey. And the heartbeat of the team flatlined and gave us two better hearts. You know, you got to have actually really three. Because I would count Nazem Kadri in there too, but that's a free agent. And we can thank Sean Monaghan for being moved for that one, right? But everyone here wants to win. And I know that, oh, you know, in order to like play at a professional level, you have to want to win. Yes, but if you go out there and you talk to the Coyotes, we want to win, is very different from a Calgary Flames team saying we want to win. Because you know the Flames are going to go out there and still compete in their division. Check out Lockdown Coyotes to see what they're looking forward to winning. But I love that in his interview, Wegar talks about, he stresses in the, the interview that he believes in this team, that they want to win, and they have a winning team. The fact that they can be so positive and truly believe it and buy into it is amazing. Because I fully believe it and buy into it. It is so different than that first offseason when this team was coming back from the bubble playoffs. And they talked about wanting to have, um, you know, a winning season. And 
uh, you know, just wanting to have a different playoff experience. I didn't believe what those boys were selling. I buy, I fully buy into this, right? I think that this team is still competitive. I think that this team is better than last year's. And I think that they know that too. And I'm okay with them kind of, I don't want to say having that arrogance about them because I don't think it's arrogance. I think that there is a line between arrogance and confidence. And I think that this team is confident. You know, you can go out there. I think like arrogance to me is the Toronto Maple Leafs going out there and thinking that they're just going to like sweep Montreal and then they end up, you know, losing again in the first round. Right. But I do have to say this team is completely a 180 from what I came into covering four seasons ago. And if you're new here to the Flames organization, hello, welcome. We are so happy to have you here. But it makes me wonder, did this have to happen sooner? And I don't think it did. I don't think it did. I spent a lot of times thinking about it. Like, what if this had happened earlier? I don't think that the team was ready for it to happen earlier. I don't think that it would have been the same. Okay, obviously, like, the storyline is, like, really cool, too. Because, like, when you're watching that Stanley Cup championship DVD, in a season after losing 115-point player and a 40-goal scorer, the Flames came back with a vengeance. You know, like, that helps sell it, too. But... I think that this team just, they had to grow up a little bit, all of it. They had to go through through Jake Muzzin flipping the puck at Matthew Kachuk. They had to go through their captain leaving. They had to go through one more bad coach, just one more, until they got to Daryl Sutter and finally had someone who can win, who knows what it takes to win and has what it takes to win. And, you know... They helped make Calgary a destination last year. And I'm just saying, I'm sure that the better that they get, the more of a destination it will be, you know, the same way that if I say Boston, someone's going to yell at me in the comments for saying I only talk about the team that I root for. But I mean, Boston was a... still is a competitive team and is a destination I would say Carolina is a destination I would say Tampa is a destination I think the Panthers are still a destination maybe but I just I do think that Calgary has become one of the most attractive teams in the league and you know they're going to remain competitive this season they are so lucky to have had the flexibility to move Sean Monahan to bring in Kadri because I don't think it would have been Luch waving his no movement clause again to bring him in I really want to see who steps up as a leader I think that they would have named a captain this offseason if they were to do it this year I mean they could always switch it up but I just I feel like they they would have done it earlier or at least by now you know maybe they'll do it between now and when the puck drops on Wednesday or Thursday when the season starts but I don't know because I don't think that that's the most important thing to the team right now I think that everyone contributes In a way that is much bigger than, you know, wearing a C. I mean, they technically all wear a C, but, you know, the special C. (laughs) Um, And, you know, I I think that you don't need a captain. Especially in a locker room like this, you don't need a captain. Because everyone is proud of themselves and is a leader in in themselves. So, you know... And I think that's part of the culture of winning. I think that in years past, they needed a voice to turn to. They needed someone to get, you know, keep the morale up. Be like, yes, we can still do it, even though they couldn't. And, you know, I give Gio a lot of credit for 
trying his best because I know what it's like to captain a ship that has no direction. And it's not very, not very fun. It is very difficult to do. But again, this team still has a lot of positive energy. They have a lot of commitment. And I saw someone say uh, that, you know, they have a lot of faith in guys that they haven't, you know, even seen play a regular season game yet. Like for their own, for their team, for, for their team. And it's like, well, that's pretty much how you can say every free agent signing is. Whether they're traded or, you know, they are a free agent. Like, <laughs> you just, that's how hockey deals are made. But, again, I think people talk just to talk. And you can hate outside the club. You can't even get into. You know, it is what it is. But, um... Coming up next, we are going to talk about winners and losers of the week because it is Friday, and I thought that what a great way to wrap up the week with with our winners and losers. And thank you all for hanging out with me on Locked on Flames, and make sure that you are subscribed wherever you're getting your podcasts. Every Friday, I try to do the winners and losers segment to wrap up the show because I think it's a great way to reflect on the week. And it gives us something to talk about. Uh, Sometimes it's outside of hockey, outside of sports in general. And, uh, you know, I I do think that this is a good way to reflect on things that need to change as well. And we're going to start with our winners this week. I have two winners because I don't think it it would be fair if I just named one, but I'm going to start with uh, Aaron Judge, who hit his 60-second home run and breaking the record um, for most home runs in a regular season by a Yankee. So, congratulations. I hope you signed with the Red Sox this offseason. Thank you. But Brad Tree Living is also my winner this week because he <laughs> – I really do my best to look outside of the organization when I name a winner – but I, I just, I can't. I'm sorry. I really can't. I, I'm obsessed with Brad Tree Living and his, how busy he was this summer. And he just, he has his nose to the grindstone and he is going. And he was on a podcast earlier this week talking about <laughs> how his daughters were, or how his daughter was so upset with him. And how he, like, she wouldn't go anywhere, um, you know, like, she wouldn't give her name. And then when she went to the Stampede after uh, the Huberdo and um, Uyghur were traded and the Huberdo extension got done, then she used her name at the Stampede to try to move ahead in the line. <laughs> and honestly, I get it. I, I, I would do the same thing, but... I think that, you know, Brad Tree Living is still the front runner for general manager of the year. You know, things could go horribly south for the Flames. Knock on wood, please. But I think the fact that he was able to get those extensions for Huberto and Wegar done before the regular season after losing <laughs> to, well, one UFA and another RFA in one summer. Well, that was a horrible time. That was a really stressful time. And I, I feel like we've come full circle and we can appreciate what this summer brought to us. But my loser of the week, uh, it doesn't come lightly. I, I feel like I didn't have to put, put much thought into this because it is just probably 2022's biggest loser, and that would be Hockey Canada. Um... I'm not going to go into specific details, but um, everything they've done and that continues to come to light, just burn it all down. The current leadership clearly sees no issue with what they're doing based on their testimony. I don't understand how you can even try to have like any semblance of leadership and like, I, I don't know, you just cannot reform what is going on there. And someone, and I'm pretty sure they're being investigated federally now because of uh, potential misuse of funds and whatnot. But 
it's just uh, very, very disappointing to say the least. And, you know, I think there's just a lot of work that needs to be done, done there and um, just burn it all to the ground. I, I don't know what to tell people. Sponsors are pulling out left and right and Nike is the latest. So good luck, I guess. But uh, my other loser of the week is probably going to be um, Don Sweeney from Boston for sending down Oscar Steen on waivers when he should have still been playing. <laughs> with the club but anyways yes please talk more about in the comments how i only talk about the bruins but yeah uh any chance i can you know. but thank you all so much for tuning in to a friday night edition of locked on flames flames are still currently losing three to one to the jets so i hope you're listening to this after the game relaxing maybe on your ride home from the saddle dome so you make yourself a snack i don't know i always like I always come home and eat a snack after a game because I'm not paying $30 for chicken tenders and four french fries, but that's, that's just me. So yes, have a wonderful weekend and I will see you uh, on Monday. And until then, go Flames go!